do I solve this part of the question? What will Master Galileo say? He doesn't know how to square root. Galileo, I am sorry. I am not worthy to be your pupil. I am a failure. <laughs> I came from the future! <laughs> Tell me, fellow human, what year is this? It's just horrible! <laughs> what, who, me? I can't solve this part of the question! There is no way! There is just no way I can solve this! <laughs> oh, I never fear, fellow human, for this is what you need! Texas Instrument Calculator, the best calculator ever. Visit ti.com for more information. Hello and welcome to the best YouTube channel featuring me, your favorite online celebrity. Last week, I built a time machine. Yes! Yeah! <laughs> and I have successfully traveled back in time to the 17th century where I met Vincenzo Viviani, who was Galileo Galilei's disciple. Vincenzo Viviani will help me solve a physics question related to object motion and kinematics. And here he is, the man himself. Buongiorno a tutti! It's strange, why are we staring at this device? I will never understand future people, sorry. Okay, let's go to the whiteboard. And so here we are, the filming booth. The whiteboard, we're gonna be watching Vincenzo Viviani teach us physics. I already wrote the question on the board, he's coming right now. I'm just gonna sit here, watch him solve the question for us. And yeah, we're gonna watch this man from the past solve a physics question. He's coming right now. Oh, yeah, oh. yeah, here we are, here we are. Wow, people in the future, they're so rich. Yeah. Where do I stand? Stand over there. Here? Oh, okay. And then look up at the, the, the camera. Right. And, and uh, don't forget to introduce yourself, yeah. Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Vincenzo Viviani. I am from Italy and today I am helping my future friend uh, to solve a physics question. The question is written on this smooth white Wow, this is so amazing. I can go on and admire this for hours. But anyways, here is a question. Air ball throws a ball. It rhymes. It's, it's funny, it rhymes. Yeah. So, air ball throws a ball upward at 23.4 meters per second. Interesting. The question wants us to determine the time it takes for the ball to reach its highest point. I. What does IE mean? It means to be precise. Oh, oh yes. Okay, of course, of course. So to be precise, the peak. So when does it reach the peak? Fairly simple question. We first have to imagine the situation. What is going on in this question? So let's say this is Eva, Eva Bob. And she throws a ball straight up at a speed of 23.4 meters. What is 23.4 meters? It is the initial velocity. So VI. VI is 23.4 meters. Per second. Sorry, per second. I almost forgot. Per second. And they want us to find the time. So T change in time is we don't know we want to find it and now common sense for people doing physics questions what is the acceleration the acceleration on earth is always the same and it is negative 9.8 meters per second squared okay anything any object that's falling towards the center of the earth is accelerating at 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, what else do we know about the problem? Let me draw you a position versus time graph. 
So this is t, or change in t, the change in time. This is zero, zero for everything. This is displacement, change in position, displacement. Eva throws the ball up. The ball started at zero, zero meters from the ground, and it started at time zero. It goes up. At first, it's pretty fast. But since there's gravity that's slowing it down, Gra the acceleration is negative, therefore it's, it is slowing down, it's decelerating, the ball is decelerating. At w and at one point, it stops in midair. That is the peak, the peak of its height. And then it starts falling down because acceleration is still negative, acceleration is the same. It's still pulling it down. So at some point, the acceleration overcomes, the gravity overcomes this velocity, the initial velocity, and the velocity becomes negative, and it starts, the ball starts falling down, down towards the ground, until it reaches zero. And this is time. Okay, so at one, maybe at one second, it is here. At two seconds, it is here. And at some point, we don't know which one, we don't know at what time, it becomes it, come, it, it arrives at this point. At this point, what is the velocity? It's zero. Exactly. Zero. Zero meters per second. That is another vital information we can extract from this. So, at its peak, at the peak, the peak, this is the peak. Vf is equal to zero. Zero meters per second. S second. Yes, exactly. Now, with all this information, we are now able to solve the question. We are now able to find at what time does the ball reach the peak. And now it's time to find the best equation to solve this question. And after examination, we find that the equation Vf is equal to vi plus a t, a delta, sorry, t. This equation is the best. It contains all the four variables and we have delta t, change in time, which is what we're looking for. This is excellent. And now it's all about plugging in the numbers. So we know that vf is zero because at the peak, its speed is zero. The ball stops, stops. So it's zero, zero is equal to, what is the initial velocity? 23, sorry, 23.4 meters per second. And then we add acceleration, which is negative 9.8 times change in time. Here is our equation. Now it's all about math. We want to move, we want to isolate this delta t. So we move 23 to the other side, which becomes negative 23.4 is equal to negative 9.8 times delta t. And now we use this wonderful, amazing tool to find that delta t change in time is equal to 2.39 seconds. Seconds. And that is our answer. At 2.39 seconds, the ball reached its peak. At 2.39 seconds, the velocity of the ball is zero. And that is the answer to the question. All of this thanks to this amazing, wonderful, ingenious tool, the Texas Instrument Calculator. Without this, oh boy, humanity has lost. This is the most important discovery, the most important invention in the history of humanity. Without this, we would have gone extinct. I'm sorry, I have to stop Vincenzo Viviani because if I were to let him talk, he would go on for hours just describing how good, how wonderful the calculator is. And um, right now I am preparing to send him back into the past 1672, where he belongs. I can't keep him in the future forever. And like all good things, this just has to end. It's pretty hard for me as well. And yeah, we're preparing to say goodbye.
and I am back home. Thank you for bringing me to the future, my friend. Farewell. Farewell. Farewell, Mr. Viviani. Ciao. Bye. Wait. You forgot this? Oh, time traveling is tiresome. Oh. Let's see what's on the news. Probably just inflation. Recent inflation is not the only concern on people's minds these days. Archaeologists in Italy have found a calculator hidden deep within the personal documents of Vincenzo Viviano, who was Galileo Galilei's apprentice and disciple. We do not know what this means, but folks, this is exciting.